What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Sorry about the rain if you can hear it. Uh, it's pretty loud even though it's not raining that hard in the new shop metal roof. It's not great for filming. Today's project is going to be a laptop, let's see, in-car laptop holder. Yeah, we'll call it that. So it's going to be a pretty straightforward project. Basically we're going to make a big cutting board and then cut some holes in it. And I'm gonna put his logo in the middle too with my CNC, I think that'll be pretty cool. So first step is get some wood and uh, start milling it up. So if you guys have been following me very long, you know I mostly use surfaced on three sides or S3S lumber. A lot of hardwood stores will offer it like this. Basically it's surfaced on three sides. So it's smooth already on three sides and leaves one rough side for you to cut to width, whatever you need. In this case, I'm gonna cut it to length and then to width over at table saw. This is some nice walnut with some cool coloring. So I'm gonna use two pieces of this for the center, and then I'm gonna put some paduk in there somewhere as well. I should not have blown that breaker. So here's my very accurate and technical digital artwork that I used a pen for. And uh, basically we're gonna make it 24 by 15 and a half with the slot in here that's gonna be 15 by two and three quarter. And that'll be the part that slides over the steering wheel. And then I'm also gonna put a lip on it here so the laptop can't slide off. So these walnut pieces are six and a half ish. So basically what I gotta do to get 15, six, is this gonna be enough? There's a big crack right there. That's nice. We're going to cut a different board, not use that one. Okay, I'm back. Got a board that doesn't have a huge crack in it. So I'm going to cut these. Basically, I'm just going to cut them to six inches a piece, and then I'll glue them together. So I get the 12, I think. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe I will cut these to... What do I want to do? I just don't know. Help me. Help me design. That looks kind of cool that way. And then do I just want the red on the outsides? So I didn't really want to just glue these two together and then put the orange or red or whatever the heck color that is on the outsides. I think what I'm gonna do is cut the edges off to make these nice and square and then cut some strips off, put that color here and then put the smaller strips back on the outside and we'll do glue up like that. It's not just gonna be like two colors. It'll be kind of like uniform. We'll see. Let's just get, just, 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 just cut it up, okay? Jeez. God dang safety glasses. Oh, found them, just kidding. Set the old blade height. Sure. That's much better. All right, let's move on to the paduk. Paduk? Paddock. How do you say it? Let me know in the comments. So this will be end up with basically a big cutting board. I did make it longer than it needs to be, but not wider than it needs to be. So once I clamp it all up, glue it up, it'll be the right width, but it'll be a little bit longer so I can trim those and make it all square. So that way I don't have to worry about trying to keep the boards exactly the same on both sides while I glue it up. It's just a little easier that way. And also these boards are a lot thicker than the walnut. Apparently they had to plane the walnut down more than this. So I could either run these through the planer and try to get them close and then sand it all after, or I can just glue it up like this, get a flat bottom, and then once I have that done, I can put it on the CNC and run a flattening program to flatten it all, which I think I'm gonna do that because I've never done that before, so we might as well try it, bring you guys along. I know this doesn't uh, apply to a lot of people because most people don't have CNCs in their shop, but I hope it's still entertaining to you and maybe it'll uh, push you to get one. They're pretty cool machines, I must admit. So when I glue stuff up, I typically use this mat People always ask me what it is. It's a Rockler silicone glue mat or whatever they want to call it. I'll link it down in the description below so you guys can check it out. And I'll also link all the other tools I use in the video for you guys. Affiliate links included, full transparency. I make at least three cents. I typically use tape on my clamps to keep the glue from sticking to them. 
it's a lot easier to clean up. But I also heard from Designs by Donnie that you can use paste wax, I think it was him, and put paste wax on your clamps. Glue won't stick to that either. So we're gonna try that this time because I don't know where my tape is. Just like everything else in the new shop, can't find nothing. Should probably put it on the sides too, I guess. Glue's been on this brush a long time. Months, maybe a year. It's harder to clean off the longer you leave it on, apparently. Get off, God, hurry up. Can't get anything done. I always get comments when I do glue ups like this. People saying, why don't you use biscuits or dowels or something? Really don't need to on this kind of stuff, especially cutting boards and things like that. It's not necessary. All that stuff is for is alignment. As long as your boards are milled properly, the glue will do the work. It actually becomes stronger than the wood, believe it or not. Okay. I think I did this backwards from how I usually do it, but that's fine. It'll work. It's like playing foosball. All right, it's a couple days later. This thing's definitely cured. We're gonna take it out of the clamps and then I'm going to take it to the house shop, the garage, whatever you wanna call it, where the CNC is. But I think I'm gonna actually try to sand this glue off a little bit first, just so this sits flat on the bed. So maybe I'll do that before we leave. Leave, before we go back over, before we go to the house, that way, over there. Just gonna use some hundred grit and knock this all down fairly flush. I made this way big. Also, can never find anything to mark with, so we're gonna use this. the downside of using a crosscut sled. <laughs> the uh, dust collection doesn't work very good. Anyway, get out of this dust and go into the other shop. I wanted to pause real quick and thank the sponsor of today's video, which is I2R or Imagination 2 Reality. They're the ones that make the CNC that I have, and that thing is built like a rock. I will leave their link down below for you guys to check out, see if maybe there's a model you can get in your shop. That thing has made a huge difference already and it's gonna be a benefit in the future for sure because I won't have to send things out to get them done. I can cut all kinds of crazy shapes and do all kinds of designs and signs like I'm doing in this video. So you guys check them out. Appreciate them for sponsoring. Let's get back to the video. All right, we're out in the old shop. This is the I2R B8 CNC. It's a two by four machine, two horsepower spindle. If you guys missed the video of me unboxing and setting this thing up, I'll leave it linked in the description below. And what I will also link down there is the bits I'm using. And this one that we're gonna start with is a surfacing bit from Bits and Bits Company, 6210 spool board surfacing bit. So get this chucked up and get this board flattened. So I'm still very new to the CNC in general. So if any of you guys are CNC fanatics and see something I'm doing wrong, because I'm sure there's multiple things, let me know. Comments, leave one, say, hey, idiot, that's not right, or what have you. But I'm learning. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys watch for a second to see what the bit looks like cutting the wood, but it makes a huge mess, so I'm just gonna do it for a second and then put the dust boot on. All right, it's actually the next day. I had to work on this file a little bit, but I did get the board flattened. Even though I messed it up a little bit, I had to take another layer off, but I think we're good now. It's a little thinner than I wanted it to be, but it'll be all right. So this is the logo I got here. This will be a cutout where it goes over the steering wheel and then his logo is here. So we'll cut this first with a quarter inch down and then use three bits on this part, quarter inch down, eighth inch down, and then a 60 degree V bit. So. I'm gonna put that guys on time lapse. Probably won't see a whole lot because I'm gonna have the dust boot on, but once it gets to the V bit, I'll actually take it off so you can see a little better. But uh, let's get to carving this thing out.
All right, it's the next day from what you guys saw last, which was me putting on this penetrating epoxy from Total Boat. It is basically to seal the wood. That way there's no air that's trapped in there that's gonna bubble up through the colored epoxy when we put that in. Next, what I'll do is mix up this high performance epoxy two to one and uh, mix in colors. I think I'm gonna do black and blue because that's kind of the colors of his logo. The wood will represent what the white would be. So let's try and see what happens. I'm gonna use syringes so I can really pinpoint where I want it and try not to overfill too much. We'll see if it uh, works out or not. So if you're wondering why we're still working on the CNC table, it's because I can clamp it down and it's double-sided tape down on the edges. So that way it won't cup hopefully or warp or anything like that while we do all the epoxy work and everything. And then once that's dry, we'll finish it all at the same time. So it doesn't have time to cup or warp. Um, this is, like I said, Total Boat High Performance Epoxy 2 to 1. I'll leave a link below for you guys to check out all this Total Boat stuff. It's really good stuff. And I really like these metering pumps as well. I will say, put something down though, because after you pump it a couple times, it uh, tends to leak out. So these are cool. It's uh, metered, so you just do one to one pump of the resin versus the hardener. It's pretty cold right now, so it's kind of thick, but I'll just do a couple of each and then we'll get the pigment mixed in. As far as the pigment goes, I'm actually gonna use this black paste from Just Resin. It's, uh, it's not metallic. I noticed a lot of the metallics will uh, turn out kind of a grayish. So I like to use this black paste, or you can use black alcohol ink. It gets really black as well, but you can see already it's super dense. So that's what we want. May not have mixed up enough. I am gonna do two layers because this stuff shouldn't be poured more than like an eighth to a quarter inch. And this is a quarter inch, so I'm just gonna be on the safe side so I don't have any problems and have to redo it. Oral syringes. And then just suck it up. You can make a mess in a hurry with this stuff, let me tell you. head out to the other shop now and get this sanded off. All right, we're back out at the new shop. I'm gonna get some 80 grit on here and get this epoxy sanded down. If I notice it's starting to gum up or something like that, I'll go a little less aggressive and maybe move a little faster because the epoxy will heat up and kind of gum and ball up. And I also don't want to put too deep of scratches in this because then they're really hard to get out. And I also want to get all the machining marks off from the CNC when it was being flattened. So I'm gonna get this thing roughed out and uh, you guys can follow along on the time lapse. All right, so I went up to 100 grit, but what I wanted to show you guys real quick before I keep going is these little pinholes are something you will get a lot with filling in stuff with epoxy because air bubbles get trapped in there. And even though you use a heat gun or a torch, a lot of times you still get a few small ones. So what I do is use CA glue and accelerator, get the CA glue down into these little pinholes, use the accelerator to cure it almost instantly, and then sand it off. And if you keep getting them, you just keep filling them until they're gone. And then you pretty much can't see them. So I just use clear, they make different colors, but I feel like the color doesn't always match exactly. So the clear pretty much just gets rid of the hole, makes it all flat and you can see through it. So it usually brings the color through. And I also like to use these little tip deals. This is Starbond and they send these with them. Works pretty good. Try to get it into the bottom of the hole and fill it from the bottom up. So you don't trap even more air. These really small ones, it's kind of hard. I usually just try to work it down in there. Sometimes use a pick or something sharp, and that usually works. Now I'll hit them with the accelerator spray so they'll cure, and then I can sand it off. Almost out. <laughs> And 
Now you can't even tell they were there. There's always going to be these really, really small pinholes. I usually just try to blow the dust out with air once I'm completely done sanding. And then once you put finish on, it kind of blends it all together and you can't really see them. So I usually don't worry about these little needle point pinholes, just the larger ones you can see. Now I'm just going to go through my grits and normal sanding. I got 100 on here that I just did with, and I got 120, 150, and 180. The finish I'm using is an oil and wax blend finish, so they don't want you to go above 180 so it can soak into the wood fibers. But the epoxy shows a lot of scratches at 180 typically, so I'll go up to that and see what it looks like. And I may go to 220 at least just on the epoxy stuff. And I haven't really had a problem with the uh, finish working in the past at that, so we'll see what happens. I hate sanding, especially hand sanding. Not, not my favorite, but it's gotta be done. Oh, look, I have a whole nother side I had not touched yet. It's great. Go back to 100, get it flat. I also wanna put a very small round over on all this. So I'm gonna switch this large round over bit out for a very small one. Which bit do I want? This one, maybe. Mm -hmm. This bit, hopefully you guys can see it. It's a white side 1980. Uh, Bits and Bits sells this as well and they put their Astra coating on there so it'll last longer and you can run it a little bit faster. It also has a brass bushing on there that's tiny so you can get in these tight corners. And I don't want a lot of round over, just basically break it over. So I think this is like a 330 second, I don't remember. Uh, it's small, basically. So I'm gonna run this around this and get it ready to uh, do the final sanding. Is it just me or the battery's dead every time you grab a tool? Every time, I don't understand. New battery. All right, we got this all sanded down to 180, except for the logo I did 220, just to try to get most of the scratches out, which it did. Uh, the ones that are still there are very small, and I think with finish, it'll pretty much make it go away. But I also needed to make this lip on the edge right here, so I took a piece of cutoff from this. What that'll do is keep the laptop from sliding off because this thing does sit at quite an angle on the steering wheel. I'm gonna water pop this just to raise the grain and then sand it one last time, and then I'll get this glued on. Then we can put on finish and see what this thing really looks like. You guys don't know what water popping is. Basically, it's just spraying water on it once you get to your final grit, and that will raise the grain, as they say. We also get kind of a cool look of what it's gonna look like a little bit when finish is on it, but just get it covered in water and let it dry. And once it dries, if you feel it, if you guys haven't done this before, I do it to all my tabletops too, or anything that may possibly see moisture. Once the water dries, if you feel it again, it'll feel kind of like fuzzy. And then once you knock those fibers down, it feels smooth again. And then if it ever does get wet in the future, the hope is that that doesn't happen and it just stays smooth. Don't want to get it too crazy wet. It's kind of cold, so it's going to take a while to dry, but set this over here to dry and then we'll get back final sand it that looks good all right i got it final sanded i figured you guys didn't need to see any more sanding you know how to sand right grab some glue and some clamps get that glued on and then we can get some finish on this thing So ratcheting clamps are pretty cool. You guys ever go to use finish and it's dried up? That's what just happened. I must have left the lid cracked or something. There was just a little bit left in the can, but it's no longer usable. So I'll order some more of that for next time. But for now, I'm gonna use some lacquer spray on this. I'll probably do like four or five coats just to build up a nice protective layer. And I'll sand a little bit between each coat. You guys probably know the deal with lacquer spray. It's a little easier to put on anyway. So let's get to putting this on. I'll show you what it looks like.
Well, it's the next day and it's all cured. Looks really good, I think. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. Let's go try it in the truck and see if it works. All right, moment of truth. Not the best lighting in the truck. I tell you, never tried to film in a truck before. Let's see what happens here. Looks pretty good. It's about how the one he showed me sits. My laptop's bigger, it's a 17. The ones they use are 15, so if this one fits, it should fit. That looks about like the other one. I think it'll work just fine. Cool. All right, back out in the shop. I can't wait to give this to my buddy. I know he's gonna be excited to use it. If you guys like this kind of video, let me know in the comments down below. I know not everybody has a CNC in their shop, but I hope showing the process kind of is entertaining to you guys. And I know the CNCs are getting a lot more affordable and readily available for normal hobbyist woodworkers. So if you guys want to check out the I2R stuff, which is the sponsor of this video and who provided my CNC, I love that thing. I'll leave it linked down in the description below and you guys can check it out. Otherwise, check out this video right here. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate the support.